So let's just change gears slightly then. I want to talk about training. Um, I know that's something that you're, still is a big, big passion. Uh, we've been walking around your gym here, which is a, uh, an awesome home gym. I don't think many people have got anything like this. Um, what, if you're, you know, again, when you were in, I guess, prime condition, but more off season, what would, what was a, you know, what, what was a typical all body workout look like? You know, what, what were some of the key things you used to do? What, you know, what, 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 what was, um, if, if there was a traditional workout, what would that, what would that be like for Frank? Well, there are two forms that I've used. One was the two-way split routine, which for me was upper body one day and legs the next. That's pretty much what I do now. And sometimes a full body workout when I have a lot of machines, so I just do two sets on everything. But for most of my training, when I was training seriously, I followed the three-way split. And that was usually doing pulling muscles on the first day, that's back, biceps, and forearms. They all work together. The second day was legs, thighs and calves, and I worked abs every day. And that gave my upper body a rest. And the third day was chest, shoulders, and triceps. And then the fourth day was rest, the three days on, one day off. And I followed that a lot. And that really gave me the results I wanted. I tried training five, six days a week like the Arnold method. I just got overtrained doing that. And so when I, I fell into this pattern, three on, one off, and it worked really well. And if I ever wanted to reach peak condition, absolutely, I would do that again. Mm. But for now, I just you know train maybe twice, maybe three times a week, and I do two, either a full body routine or a split routine. I don't do a lot. Mm. You know, I, I stay light. I walk a lot. That's the main thing. Is I walk a, a good mile and a half, two miles every day. We have this lake we go to. Beautiful. Early in the morning, take our dog. It's eight tenths of a mile all around. It's really nice. It's very uplifting. Mm. So, how long, in, in terms of the duration of the sessions, then how long, we, when you know, when you were in your peak condition, how long was a typical workout? I'd say an hour to an hour and fifteen minutes. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. If I was training heavier, it would take a little longer. It might take an hour and a half, but I generally wasn't. You know, I'm doing three sets of everything working up on every set, maybe uh, 12, 10, 8 reps, increasing the weight on every set by a little bit. Getting a pump, that was my main thing, getting a pump in the muscle I'm working. That was always my goal. If you're not getting a pump, it's not working. You got to get blood into the area. So whatever give me a pump, that's what I'll do. Right. And what, what, what about rest? Were you sort of long periods and, and sort of, you know, Going heavy or fairly short? How, how did that if I was going heavier, I'd rest longer, but it was never more than, if I would set a timer to, to ding every two minutes, that was the, the, the least I would rest, the longest I would rest. Or it might be three minutes if I was going real heavy, but I generally didn't have to. And so uh, basically I called it cultivating the breathless state because I'm breathing slightly harder than I normally would in a workout. My pulse was elevated maybe 100, 110. And with the, um, with the sort of intensity then, well, you, you said you trained to a pump, were you, so you know, you'd obviously been very good at, at building muscle. What, what was the sort of the secret to doing that? Because you, you weren't a super heavy training person, was you? So how, how were you getting that, that, you know, those muscle gains from, from that sort of medium type of weight range? Over time they came. You know, if I kept training like that, I would make progress. I mean, I would, the muscle would be more developed, it would be more defined, it would stand out more. If I was really going all out for growing, I would, you know, do lower reps with heavier weight, rest longer. And my training was sort of paced like that. I'd say during those late spring months, I was training more with heavier weights with longer rest periods. And then the late summer, early autumn, I'd be training quite, quite faster with less rest between sets, you know. And the thing I always did was stretch between sets. You know, I don't think many people do that. Why, why how and why did you do that then? Well, because, you know, uh, it sort of extends your set. When you're doing a set, you're focused on contracting the muscle, but when you're stretching, you're stretching the muscle. So it sort of gives it a completion. 
And it keeps blood in the muscle too, which is the main thing. Right. You know, you can get a great pump stretching. Good. So if you were doing something like chest, you would you would do your you do your set and then what you you would then do spin. doorway stretch. Okay. So I'd get in a doorway and just hit it right here and just lean out and I'd feel right here. I have a place to do that's perfectly called the Pillars of Hercules. These two pillars that hold up our patio. I go out there and it's a perfect place for doing that stretch. And I have different stretches for different body parts, about 10 of them I use. And what sort of reps would you, were, did you find work best for you? Usually eight to 12, right in that area. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I didn't do any kind of force reps. Usually I sometimes would do a drop set where I'd go to a lighter weight, but only when I was getting to the point where I needed to do that, like the last few months, last few weeks before competition when I had the peak. I would really go beyond what I normally would do. And, and you, you, you uh, talk in your book about the negatives, and that's something like when I used to, when I did my competitions many years ago. I, I used to, I got really great results from that, and I, I find it, it's, it's, I found it difficult to do on my own. But I always used to, um, probably didn't used to have to use quite as much weight, but I, you know. It, it worked quite well for me. What, what um, did, was that part of your routine or you only did that? I always did time? slower negatives than positives. Right. You know, but the thing is, I wanted to keep the set rhythmic, the reps rhythmic, like to a metronome. But so let's say I'm doing bench press, it would be like this. Because you're 40% stronger on the negative. So if you want to tax your muscles more fully, do a slower negative, make it harder. Mm. Make lighter weights feel heavier. That was my motto. So you don't have to really go heavy. You have to make it feel heavy. Mm. And I know a lot, a lot, sort of after your time, that the, you know, a lot of it was about you know going super heavy. Um, but you know, you're you're probably well. You you have a slightly different approach, don't you? And I guess also going heavy creates a lot of injuries. Yeah, your possibility of injury increases dramatically when you're going real heavy like that. And, you know, it's bad news getting an injury because, you know, once you do, you're sort of stuck with it. It tends to recur if you're not, not careful. The injury defines your upper limit in weights that you can use. You generally won't ever be able to go past that. So why, why even find that out? I mean, I found it out. Because you don't know any better at first. You know, you just do it. Do what everybody else is doing, what somebody tells you because you don't know any better. But you know, if you don't learn, you're in bad, you're going to be in bad shape and you won't last. And the thing about it is the longevity of your career. How long are you going to keep doing this? Well, my answer is as long as possible. I want to keep training. I'm more interested in longevity than heavy weights. Heavy weights are not important at all anymore. But making lighter weights feel heavier in strict form is important. And getting a pump is important. I think that what's important is getting blood to the muscles and developing your circulatory system. That's what's important. You know, once you lose your circulation, you're dead. You're done for. You're mm. Done for. You got to get that that blood in there. So what's what's this one-sided workout that you talk about? What 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 what's the benefit of doing that? I think it's a great idea, but I've never done it. Right. So <laughs> theoretical is I think that if you just trained one side of your body in a workout with one dumbbell or one, one pulley, and then maybe train the other side later in the day or the next day, just think about it. If you're doing a curl, how much blood can you get into your biceps doing a, you know, half of it goes here, half of it goes here. But when you're doing one at a time, it all goes there. It makes sense to do that. So, you know, isolateral workout or one-sided workout. Boy, you're up on all the stuff I've, I've written about. It. <laughs> I think that's a great idea, you know, but it, if you have the time to do it, nobody has the time to do that. Yeah. I mean, if I was younger and had nothing else to do, I was at one time, but I didn't know about that, I would try it. Or if I'm going to the gym twice a day, which I was at that time, I'll make work my left side in one time, right. my right side the other time. Do you know if there's any research about that at all? No, I don't think so. Somebody should do it. Yeah. 
I guess it makes sense. I suppose if you're right, if you're training in the morning and afternoon, you could just do, I don't know how you'd feel sort of like at the end of a, the workout, you'd you know, kind of be all pumped up on one side of your body. <laughs> so what's wrong with that? Take sports. Yeah. All sports are one-sided. Mm -hmm. Like I shoot archery, I've shot a lot of archery. It's all one-sided. Yeah. You don't switch arms. I mean, I do do some, I did sometimes. I used to shoot right-handed until the shoulders started giving out and you're doing this, and now I shoot left-handed. You know, it's possible. They say, oh, your right eye or your left eye. I don't think so. You know, I can see out of both eyes. I'm using sight. What difference does it make?